Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 93 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm dismantling my Draconic Reactor. Yes, I spent an entire episode making it and now I'm completely taking it apart. Uh, so, last episode we started working on making this fancy little device, which is pretty cool and actually does a really nice job of producing power. Um, and then we realized that we don't have a good way of transmitting the power needed between dimensions. Um, so for that reason, I've decided to move it back to the overworld and we're gonna cross our fingers really hard that we don't accidentally destroy our entire base. And before anybody claims I'm just trying to role play out the fact that I wanna move to a void dimension, that is not the case, I promise. If I wanna move to a void dimension, I'm gonna move to a void dimension. I'm not intentionally gonna blow up my base because to be fair, Moving to a void dimension would be a lot easier if my resources still existed. If my whole base blew up, it would like obliterate all the things. Like, I should probably make a backup of my world before I go and do this. In fact, hold on, I'll be right back. I'm gonna do that. All right, just closed my world, made a backup and logged back in. <laughs> I'm literally <laughs> just hoping I don't destroy all the things. Uh, so for this, so remember, there's two things that we need to effectively do. Uh, we need to get power to the reactor, and we have to get power from the reactor. Um, so with those, hey there, buddy, what's up? I've got a really awesome bow I want to teach you about. Yep, see? That's great. So for that, I think what we're going to want is um, a couple of these dudes. So let's get, like, two of them for now. That should be sufficient. Not hard to get, actually. And then we're gonna want relays. Let's get about 10 of them. Does that sound fair? Doesn't sound, it's not too bad to craft these. We need 108 blocks of redstone. Wow, those are expensive. Um, what's the crafting recipe of these? So it's fusion crafting. Oh, you need a bunch of wyvern cores and you get basically four at a time. So fusion crafting, I think will work with this setup. We're gonna find out like in about a second, in theory. Do, 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 do. This is the part where you start crafting the thing. Yay. Do we have too many diamonds in here? Is that what's happening? So let's see. Four diamonds, four wyvern cores, and yeah, okay, so. Yeah, see this is the same problem I run into with the other infusion dude. If I make more than one set of these at a time, we have a little bit of a problem. Pretty much what it comes down to. Um, so I'm gonna have to one of these days figure out how to, short of doing something computer crafty, um, specify like, hey, it, it would have to be some kind of logic piece, right? Um, that would be like, hey, if the item in the center is this, then emit a certain color and then transfer these items. That's probably the way we would have to go about doing it. Probably doable. I should I should probably look into doing that because that would probably be a bit of a fun automation step. Poof. Nice. And then you should distribute appropriately all the items that you need to do. Nice. And then we'll pop this dude in and we'll get the other set. So basically, I've decided my destination for this is going to be kind of out here really far away on the top of this mountain, off in the distance. This is my intended destination. And I hope that this is a good idea. Um, so you can kind of see it from the distance. And then we're gonna have just like pretty much a chain of these things, energy relay crystals just relaying energy to and from my base. So I basically want two sets of crystal running, right? So what I'm gonna have, like, well, well I'm thinking like right-ish about here, like right on the edge of this, like this should be far enough away such that if it exploded, I'm hoping, <laughs> I'm hoping um, that it's far enough away. So let's see, this is 25, 460. 
So Z is the 460. I want to kind of center it, if I can, on the orb, because that would be kind of cool. So the center of the orb is what? The center of the orb, oh, I was one block off. It's 461. Nice. So I can totally do this. And if I'm going to be flying back and forth, flight speed modifier, boost it up. Whoosh. In terms of vertical height, I don't care if it's centered or not. It's, uh, you know, it is what it is. I don't care if it's centered vertically. That kind of scared me, I'm not going to lie. I jumped a little bit. Excuse me, daytime please. Sunrise. I could automate that, by the way. I can trigger a redstone signal to cause it to be sunrise. What are you doing? What are you doing? Stop doing whatever you're doing. Stop. I don't think you liked me flying away from you when I said sunrise, please. Interesting. It did not appreciate me flying out, even though this chunk is chunk loaded. Huh. Okay. Uh, so what was I doing? Things and stuff. That's right. I just want to make sure that this doesn't, like, do something weird with time. Because that would probably be bad. Come on, Celestial Manipulator. Alright, it seems to have calmed itself down. Okay, so that's going to be the centering of my thing. So, like, right here, I think the way I did this... Uh, was that correct? There we go. Oh, okay, interesting. I'm finding if I shift right click, it places it the opposite direction. That's neat to know. Um, so I kind of... So we want to do... I want to make... Well, yeah, we're cool. How about three blocks above? Does that sound good for the core? And then one, two, three, four, five, we will put this dude. This dude. This dude. This dude. Does that sound good? Oh, it's snowing. Look at you. Hopefully the snow won't pose a problem for my uh, stuff going on here, but we'll find out. Okay, so that's a good start. I like it. And this should work? Yeah. No, look, 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 cool. So I'm going to pop the fuel in there. Boop. Ready to go into charge mode. But we're not going to charge it yet because this thing needs power first. So to get power in there, uh, we're going to want a draconic crystal. And this is going to set to output power to the reactor stabilizer. Meanwhile, this guy is going to get a crystal, which will input power to, uh, or from the reactor stabilizer thingy, right? So this will input power from this block and input it into the network, and that should be good. So let's go turn off the snow and rain, because that's going to be annoying. Uh, weather, stop rain. Poof. Cool. Flux gate, that's right. We want to have that on. Um, and I want these things. So what I'll probably want to do is steal this guy. Power going out that way. You're in input mode, so that's good. Cool. Now, I don't actually know what the range on these draconic crystals is. And I don't know if it's, like, documented anywhere. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Okay. 
So that's good enough. That's still linked, so that's cool. I want to kind of like max this out if I can and figure out what that range maximum is. Still good. Device is linked still, nice. Wow, still linking. All right, I'm gonna need more blocks. And you know what else I'm gonna get is a tape measure. And some more bricks. So at this point, we're currently at... Sixty-two meters, and it's still good. So I'm gonna like guess sixty-four. So one, two, three. Is that too far? Nope, still linked. I'm assuming there's a limit. Wow. Maybe 128 is what we're talking about here. Yep, there we go. Finally got it to a too far away point. Nice. We're right on the, it might be 128. So you're linked there, but you're not linked there. So we just learned what the range is. So linked. Let's just do it like this, it'll be easier. The number of blocks between the laser points is, yep, 126. So I was right with my 128 guess. Cool, all right, well that's good to know. So then what we do is we place a block here. We measure out, you know, 128 to here. So let's see about how far this goes, right? And the good news is we can kind of tune this up as needed a little bit. I'm not going to need as many as I thought, which is good news. Whoosh. So this is what? 125. Look at the perfectiveness of that. That is cool. So then all I really need to do Cool. So that should be right on line there. So now I should be able to bind to this guy to this guy, device is linked. Perfect. That is awesome. And then we can just clear this out. And then you combined to that guy. So technically, actually, what I should be binding, since this is the top, this is the energy out, this should be binding whoosh to this dude down here would be how I want to do this. So let's redo this a little bit. I'm going to redo this off camera. All right, so if I clear this out and we bind this to this, what we should wind up with is energy radiating 
zoom and zipping its way straight across to here. Now, was I smart enough to keep this within one chunk this time? Ha, <laughs> nope. Way to go, dire fail. Probably should have done that. So you know what I might do? Mm, do I want to do that? Yeah, I haven't really done anything yet. I'm going to relocate this just a smidge so that it's like within one chunk. Uh, well, no, because I had it centered along that line, which is how I did want to have it. So, I mean, what I can do is just chunk load this area over here. So what I'm going to want to probably do is pick this dude up and we're going to run him probably let's do this let's get this guy whoosh so this is where we're going to want to meet up with that laser thing right so let's put him a couple blocks back and we're going to bind you to this laser whoosh and then you are 276, 461, 276, 461, 461. So like right here, is that straight up and down? That looks pretty straight up and down to me. And then you can be power output to that guy. Cool. So that way, when the energy is running, right, that we're generating power, it's going to come in through this beam. Zzz, up there. The power from the reactor is going to come straight across here. Cool. And that's what it will be like. Back in a sec once I clear out these blocks. All right, guys. So if I'm not mistaken... Let's bring out our laser just to be sure, but I think we're in pretty good shape. So the power coming in will follow this path. Now, unfortunately, like we, we kind of have to cross paths here a little bit, but the power coming in should go here. Zoinks follow along here. And that'll be the power that the reactor is generating and sending back to my base. In terms of power coming to the reactor, it's gonna come along this line, whoosh, right from here and then it'll kind of right into this guy. I think that'll work out pretty well. So if we go activate this thing, so if we check, in theory this should be holding 64 million RF. Nice, okay. So we should be in good shape to activate this guy, right? Uh, so we do wanna have all eight fuel in there, right? Why do you only wanna have seven fuel? Can I put you in? Can I put you in? Yeah, why don't you wanna accept that eighth fuel? interesting to me because you should be able to accept eight this reactor continues to confuddle me but it's all good all right so should we charge it oh wow look at that energy saturation wow that is way <laughs> did you see how much faster that went with the lasers wow i think we just transferred 500 million rf like that fast all right so we're gonna change this to be 50,000 RF a tick for the flow. And that's gonna be the energy output. And I'm gonna make it 150,000 when it's receiving a redstone signal. And we're gonna have to kind of mess with this a little bit uh, to get the numbers right. Cause we have to see how much we're creating and then we'll go from there. Does that sound fair? So I'm gonna get a lever. Um, I mean, technically I could just have it be like zero on the low, but that's fine. But wow, that was fast. Did you guys see how fast that was? It was a little bit fast, wasn't it? Um, blink and you missed it. Yeah. So if I activate you... Oh, wow. You're generating... Wow, your containment field strength is beautiful. Like, beautiful. Generation rate 282. So we're generating a lot of RF, right? Um, so now what if we, like... Save this dude. Like, well, I want to be... I want to be careful about this, right? So with a redstone signal, you should start outputting power more quickly so let's make it like 300,000 and I'm gonna turn you off for the moment and you're gonna be 200,000 how's that sound so currently it's outputting 200,000 
we're generating 220. So if I flip this lever, what happens? Um, the energy saturation is dropping because we're outputting energy at a rate of 300,000 RF a tick. That's how much is flowing in the direction of the of the thing. And if we zzz, all the way over to here, we should see a net gain of roughly. Wow, where is all my R? Oh, it's a it's zero RF a tick transfer. Wow, where is all my power? <laughs> what happened to all my power? Anybody have any idea where all my power is? I have no explanation for all my power and its current situation. Did we literally just like completely drain my thing? I don't know where all my power is. Field input rate is 370,000 RF and generation is 252. So we're actually costing more fuel right now, or costing more RF than we're transmitting, right? Um, we're outputting 300,000. Wow, that's a little insane. I don't know where all my power went. I didn't check it right before, like I didn't see what the orb was at, I just assumed that we were at a decent number. But in theory now, so my containment field strength is technically dropping because we're using more power. We're using 330,000 RF a tick, right, to, to maintain that field strength. But that number is coming down. And the generation rate is going up. So at some point, I'm hoping that it will flop in such a way that we have more generation than we have field input, right? And the core temperature is going up, which I think is, is good. Generation rate. Yeah. Cool. So as saturation increases, this number will go down. Okay. So what if we set you to... 350,000. Interesting. Now if I flip this lever off to the point where you're at 200,000, still trying to understand the whole metric here. <laughs> um, but we're getting there. Core temperature is dropping at this point. Okay. So let's put this back at 300,000 RF. Is temperature going up or down? It's going down. I don't know if temperature going up or down, like what's better. <laughs> uh, still not 100% sure. Field input rate is increasing. And generation is increasing as well. I guess it's good. Just out of curiosity, what if I bumped this up to like... ...450,000 RF is allowed to be extracted from there. Generation is increasing, but so is field input rate. I might want to disconnect this thing down here because I think the key is to keep your field, your containment field strength at a number that like the higher the field input, right? So generation, this is the current RF being generated by the generator. This is the exact RF input required to maintain the current field strength. As field strength increases, this will increase exponentially. The only time this is going to explode is when field strength goes to zero. So I think if we limited the amount of power going in, that would be good. Can I make another flux gate? Is that doable? That seems reasonable. Because what I could do... is disconnect this dude, right? Let's get our beam connector to this thing, ready to that.
So how's things going on over here, right? Yeah. So I think I basically want to limit the field input rate a little bit. Generation's going up, which is good. So that's kind of cool. Still not entirely sure on the numbers here and what everything means. I feel like as energy saturation drops, temperature is going up and containment field strength is kind of going up as well. So if I were to turn you off, right? So now you're only outputting 200,000 R of a tick, right? Field input rate is dropping because we are only generating 200,000 R. So energy saturation is going up, therefore generation and core temperature are going down. Interesting. All right, I'm kind of understanding the, the, the metrics here um, a little bit. So I think first things first, we wanna limit the amount of power coming into the reactor. Um, we could technically disable this altogether, this power input thing. Um, but I think instead of doing that, what I wanna do Are you okay here? Okay, you need to stop sending power out altogether. Okay, bad things are about to happen if that drops all the way to zero. Whoosh, that's a little bit better. <laughs> um, from what I understood, like it would draw power out of its internal buffer, which is the energy saturation. So if you're not outputting any redstone signal, is this, no, it's off, right? So you should not be outputting any power and you can see that there's no laser beam going out of there. So you should draw containment field strength field input rate, interesting. I want to see if this like gets close because what I'll do is flip the lever and that'll send power in again. I want to see if this stabilizes at some point. I would expect it to. I should really be testing this in a test world, shouldn't I? Uh, you would think that would be smart, right? Fuel conversion level. 25%. This is making me a little nervous, this containment field strength thing. At what point are you gonna like stop dropping here containment field strength? If you get below 10%, I'm gonna get really nervous. The problem is we don't have any power in our orb back at our base. So we're not sending power into the containment field at the moment. And I believe if it hits zero, we're in trouble. Field input rate, 20,000. Generation, 76,000. I thought it drew a power directly out of its internal energy buffer, but I guess not. So I better allow you to start beaming energy out and then back in, and that should start filling this guy back up. All right, so I'm gonna have to figure out how this is gonna work. All right, guys, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to change this up a little bit, kind of, sort of. I think if I'm like right here, Hey, stop it. Flight's a little too fast right now. I need to slow that down a little. Are you good? Nice. So you, instead of being linked to my main thing, I'm gonna try linking you. So what I, I was under the impression that it would automatically, so let's see, you're gonna be output, you're gonna be input. Right, output, right, so you need to be input, that's right. Um, and then we'll kind of put like,
cool. That sound fair? Everybody kind of seems to have a decent amount of power in you. So what we'll do is we'll limit how much power is allowed to come into this system via the flux gate. So on low signal, let's do like 30,000 RF. Let's, let's make it 40,000. I don't know exactly what I want. And a million RF a tick on the high signal. Does that seem fair? Maybe we'll get myself some more levers. There is a wireless transmitter in range, I assure you. Whoosh. Cool. So when you're receiving a signal, you're allowing a million RF a tick to go through. Sound cool? And then what we'll do is we'll basically feed the power straight in from the reactor like that. So let's activate this guy again. I, I deactivated him for a time being. Also, I want to go check in on my whoosh over here. How's this thing? Are you building up a backlog yet? Oh yeah, look, we're, we're, we're backlogging power again. Cool. That's nice to see. All right, so everybody's kind of charged up and happy. Good. Everything stopped because I was literally out of power to the point where these things were no longer transferring steam between the reactor and the turbine because we were out of power. Uh, to get things up and running again, I threw some nether stars in my nether star generator and activated it. Uh, and I threw some speed upgrades in there to, you know, make it even better. So that got me a nice power boost. So we used some nether stars to generate power. Let's, I'm debating whether or not I want to have, I'm going to be ready to hook you up to this guy to receive power from our main base, but I want to check first. So if I charge, all right, cool. So where did you get that power from is what I don't understand. Was it the energy saturation? I'm not 100% sure. I would expect energy saturation to be beaming the energy. This is on input, right? So we get energy from here and we beam it out in this general direction to here, right? This is input, right? And it makes its way straight into here. And this is output, I hope. Yes, output. Cool. So that all should be working. Cool. So on a high redstone signal, you're outputting 450,000 RF a tick. I guess that's when the reactor's on. So it's still in warming up mode. So I guess it needs power. So if I were to activate you, the device target is too far away. No, it's not. Stop it. What if we just move it one block closer? Or two, technically. I guess we could make it one. We'll make it two. Can you to here now? So that gave me some core temperature increase. So now can I bind you to, what was it, over here? Too far away. Nice. <laughs> Killing me. Here. And you get power from here. Wow, yeah, we are killing our RF by doing that. Large amounts of RF cost. But are you now at a point where your your core temperature is decent? So we can activate this guy. So the field input rate is at 2,746 to keep it at this temperature, right? So I think if I fluctuate this enough, and I'm smart about it, so let's start at like 25,000. Redstone signal low. 
So you're allowed to receive 25,000 now. So if I activate this dude, we're outputting our energy at a rate of 450,000 RF a tick. Generation rate is increasing. Core temperature is increasing. Field input rate is definitely increasing. And making me nervous. So let's attenuate this. Let's make this 100,000 RF a tick, right? Redstone signal low, right? So what that should mean is core temperature is going to stabilize at some point. And this thing should stabilize at some point. And generation rate is slowing, right? So generation rate is slowing. So the more energy we output from the reactor, the hotter it gets, and the more energy we have to put in to maintain the field input. That's how we have to play this, okay? So I'm gonna make you like 45,000 RF a tick, save that. And that should stabilize my field input. We're only at 10%, which is kind of making me a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie. But at some point, this should start building up, which will lower my generation, which will lower my core temperature, which will lower the, 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 the pressure on the field. See, field's stabilizing now. That's kind of cool. Okay. I got it, I got it, guys. I got it. The more energy we take out of the reactor, the hotter it's allowed to get. Energy saturation means how much is built up inside, right? So the more we pull out, the less energy saturation there is, the more the reactor tries to compensate by getting hotter, right? And the hotter it gets, the more energy it needs to maintain that field input rate. So by adjusting the amount of energy we're getting out of the reactor, adjusts how hot it can get, and then can adjust the amount of power required to go in. So currently we're at a pretty stable rate where we are requiring about 40,000 RF and we're generating 156,000 RF. Now at some point this is gonna stabilize um, because this energy saturation is gonna climb because we're generating 150, but we're only outputting 100 because our signal's low, right? So if I made this 200,000, save, and we gave it a redstone signal, what we should see happening is we're starting to drain energy out of the energy saturation, which means our generation is gonna climb, making our temperature climb, or at least it'll start to climb soonish, right? Um, and then our field input rate's gonna climb. So the amount of energy required to maintain that field is gonna go up. I turn off this redstone signal, less energy is being drawn out of the reactor, meaning the saturation goes up, meaning the generation goes down, meaning the field input, yes, cool. Right, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay, so that's kind of cool. I got this now. I finally figured it out. I made it a point to not understand this reactor before I really got into it, and I'm pretty sure I've got a good handle on it now. It's actually kind of cool. So, you know, if you're really smart about this, you can be pretty, pretty good about how much power you pull out and, and put in. So if we wanted to find the right numbers, we could totally do that. And, and as long as our containment strength stays at a decent number, like we're cool. Um, and I'm sure there's open computers or computer craft programs out there that can handle this. So we should have a net gain of around 100-ish thousand RF a tick. Yes, 112,000 RF a tick net gain. And the reason we have that net gain is currently we're saying you're allowed to send out 100,000 RF. Remember, we're getting about 20-ish from the reactor in our basement, right? So you're allowed to send out about 100,000 and you are having a field input of around 41,000. That is kind of cool. That is neat. All right. I want to play with this more probably in the next episode. Uh, but for now, I want to say it's stable. It should be stable, right? Because I've got you set to 45,000 RF. That's what's allowed to go into the stabilizer. But honestly, to keep it at this number, it only needs 40. So that's why the companion field strength is going up, which is kind of neat. 
That is cool. Okay. So we don't need containment field to be at 100. Because the higher it gets, as field strength increases, this will increase exponentially. So the higher percentage field containment we have, so like the lower we keep it, the better, right? But we don't want it to get too low because then it goes boom, and boom is bad, right? Um, so we could definitely get more power out of this thing. We just need to play with the numbers a little bit. All right, wrapping up point. Darwell 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Ran into some power issues, but at this point, we're producing a nice steady 100,000 RF a tick without breaking too much of a sweat. And I feel like we could totally bump this number up. And it's hopefully far enough away from my base that it won't cause any giant explosions that at least impact me too much. Like, this feels about the range from the, from the, from the dragon. So, I mean, it hopefully won't hurt too much. We'll see. I don't think it'll explode, though. I think I've got, the, I've got it understood better now, which is cool. So I could totally like attenuate this field and drink, bring it down a little bit. I could, I could probably even drop this to something like, hey, hey, like we can make it like forty-five thousand on the high end. Give it a redstone signal. Drop this down to like thirty thousand. I know I'm supposed to be wrapping up, and I'm doing a bad job of that. I think if I right-click this, I can see the UI. Yes. So if I turn off the signal, the containment field will start to drop kind of cool which means technically we can get more power out of this thing right and we'll see if it stabilizes around 30 percent and there's also redstone signaling that you can do you can do a redstone mode on this thing um where it'll output a redstone signal based on some information which is kind of neat so yeah the field will drop to the point where it's stabilized at 30,000 r of a tick it's kind of cool um, I'm gonna make you 35,000 RF a tick just to be safe. So if we save that, it should drop to a point where it's at 35,000 RF a tick. We're almost there, so I kind of want to see it. I know I'm doing a bad job of wrapping up. Let's make it like 36.5. How's that sound? So 36.5 is what's allowed in there, and it should stabilize at 36,500 RF a tick. Would be my expectation. Yeah, see, it's 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 slowing down its rate of descent. It's kind of neat, actually. And it's currently generating 130,000, right? So what I should be able to do, this will stabilize at 36.5, right? Yeah, ish. It actually needs less. So I could bump this up to like 131. Let's make it high as 131, and low will make it like 100,000, right? So with a high signal, it's now outputting, whoops. It's now outputting 131, and you, come on zombies, I'm trying to demonstrate something here. Beat it, would you? Watch a creeper show up, right? So you, yeah, the field's dropping. Okay, cool. That's kind of neat. I'm going to turn you off, and now the energy required to keep the field is lower because generation is going to drop. Neat. All right, definitely wrapping up point. So Daryl20 signing off. I totally want to play with this a little bit more because uh, I feel like if we attenuate it correctly we can totally get some really good rf a tick out of it the problem of course would be um you know doing it wrong and it exploding but hey at least we have power i'm happy all right guys take it easy